Okay, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion on frequency distribution table. Okay, so previously we talked about how to calculate the class width, the upper and lower class limits, and we found the frequency. So now we're going to build onto that table, and we're going to find class boundaries, class midpoints, relative frequencies, and cumulative frequencies. Recall we had uh, data on 45 um, members of the of Navy, Navy and their 1.5 mile run times. Okay. And we found the um, class width, right? We divided up the data into classes, and then we calculated the frequencies. Okay, so starting, uh, what we're going to be doing now is starting with the class boundaries. Okay, so first, what are class boundaries? Class boundaries, okay, or if we were to draw a number line and have our class limits on that number line, here's 8.40, 9.49. That's the first class, right? The second class is starts at 9.50 and ends at 10.59. This is the second class here. All right, third class starts at 10.60 and ends at 11.69. Okay, and then we continue like this um, for our five classes, right? So the point of class boundaries is that you see this gap. In frequency distribution tables, it's for continuous type data. So there should be no gap. And that's what class boundaries handle. They handle the gap. So what we'll do is, is we'll basically say, okay, this, this second class here, it will go from this middle between the, between the gap to this middle between this gap. Between 9.49 and 9.5, okay, is 9.495. And then between 10.59 and 10.60 is 10.595, right? That's basically, that is halfway between, between uh, 9.49 and 9.5 is 9.495. Between 10.59 and 10.60, is 10.595. Okay, and then we need to basically continue doing this. So for the third class, this orange class, there's no gap. So 595, and then where do I end? I'll end halfway between these two numbers here. Halfway between 11.69 and 11.70. Okay, and then lower will start where I ended. And upper will be halfway between these numbers here. 12.795. Okay, the first and the last one I saved for last because they are the hardest because we don't have classes before and after them. Right, so what we'll do is we'll basically, we'll we'll say, well, what if we did have a class right after it? What's the, what's the theme here? What's happening? If you notice, it looks like we're basically, you, you need all of the widths to be exactly the same. So what we're doing is, is we're basically going 0 0.005 in either direction of the, of the class limits. So 0 0.005 less than 8.40 is 8.3. Uh, nine five. Okay, and then we know that this is going to match this 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 upper one is going to match um, that lower one there. Okay, so this will be nine point four nine five. All right, then we have this last class. Okay, the lower is going to match this upper of the previous, so 
five. Okay, and then where do we end? We need to end basically 0 0.005 more than whatever this top piece is here. So that's the, that's the theme, right? It's always 0 0.005 more. Okay, notice the pattern, okay? So this will be 13.895. Notice that the boundaries, there is no gap. Okay, that's the point. For here, there's a gap, right? So there's no gap between class boundaries. Okay, now we're ready to find our class midpoints. Class midpoints is basically halfway through the class. So once again, if I were to draw my number line and I have my class limit, the midpoint would be exactly halfway in between the class. And all of them are the same, right? So 9.50 to 10.59, the midpoint is halfway. Now people have asked me, does it matter if I calculate the midpoint of the class boundaries or midpoint of class limits? Well, they should be exactly the same because when you, basically when you calculated the class boundary, all you did was extend the sides, extend the sides of your class limits, okay? but the midpoint should be exactly the same. All right, so it's easier to cal calculate class midpoints using class limits, so I'll go ahead and use them. And what I wanna do is, is I basically wanna find an average, right? Um, the middle between two numbers is going to be their average. So for this first one, I'll have 8.40 plus 9.40, Four, nine, and I'll divide it by two. So what I'll get in the numerator is 17.89. When you divide that by two, I'll get my class midpoint to be 8.945. Okay, and I'll continue like that. So I'll have 9.50 plus 10.59 divided by two, and I'll get 10.045. Okay, and I'll continue like that. Okay, so now that I've finished calculating my class midpoints, I'm ready to go ahead and find my relative frequencies. So relative frequency means the frequency relative to the total. So first you need to know what's the total. Total should be your sample size. Your total frequency should be your sample size. But go ahead and double check that if you add up all your frequencies, what number do you get? Okay, we get 45. Should always be your sample size. If it's not, you may have made a mistake in calculating your frequencies. Okay, so relative frequency is basically relative to that total. So for the first class, it'd be 18 divided by 45. All right, 18 divided by 45 is 0 0.4. Now, the way you give your relative frequency, it's really a matter of preference. Some uh, textbooks and some professors will like it as a decimal point. My personal favorite is to give it as a percentage. I think it makes the most sense to give it as a percentage. So uh, what is 0.4? If you times that by 100%, you get 40, 40%. Okay, they're the same thing though. It's really just a matter of how your professor or your textbook wants you to give the relative frequency. Okay, so for next one, 12 divided by 45 is 0 0.26666. So I'll go and round that to, to 7, 0 0.27, right? And if we were to give that as a percentage, that would be 27%. Okay, next. 7 divided by 45 is 1.5555, so 0 0.16, I'll round it, which is 16%, okay? Um, the next class is, is going to be the same because it's they're both 7. And then lastly, 1 divided by 45 is 0 0.22222, which I'll round to 0 0.02 which is 
Now, if you add up your relative frequencies, you should get 100%, or if it's decimals, you should get one. Or I'll go ahead and add up my percentages, which I'll get 40 plus 27 plus 16 plus 16 plus 2, and I get 101. And that 101 is basically it's rounding error. Okay, so you can have a little bit of rounding error, that's fine. But it should be basically approximately equal to 100%. So if it's off by more than one percentage point, then it's probably more than just rounding error and you wanna double check that you calculated all your relative frequencies correctly. But if it's like one percentage point, it's highly likely that that's just some rounding error that you have. So it needs to be approximately equal to one in the decimals case, approximately one, or in the percentages, it needs to be approximately 100%. Okay, so lastly, we are ready to calculate our cumulative frequencies, which cumulative frequencies are basically, what we do is we start at the first class, and then we just add up until we get down to the bottom, okay? So we accumulate as we're going down. So start with your first class frequency, 18, and then add on the next class frequency, so add on 12. 18 plus 12 is 30. Then add on the next class frequency, which is 7. So we added on 12. Now we're adding on 7. So that's 37. Okay, let's add on this next 7, which would give us 44. And then add on this 1, which gives us 45. Now your final cumulative frequency should always be equal to n, your sample size, okay? If it's not, then you've made a mistake and you're adding. 